Hello, family out there, and Hi. this is uh, Pastor Lee Choate and Pastor Marsha, and we're here today to uh, have Bible study with you guys. Okay. Um, we hope that everybody is doing well. Uh, let me see if I can get uh, get uh, all the messages on here. Huh. Oh, I'll have to do it on my phone. Uh, but we hope that everybody's doing well out there. We miss everybody. We miss being able to do Bible study with everybody. But, you know, God has a plan. God has a purpose. Yes. And it's good that we can at least see each other here online. Uh, God has been doing wonderful things in, in our church services. For those of you who haven't been able to come out, we've been having a great yeah. time, a really good time in the yeah. Lord. And we've been having some some other speakers speak. And this week we had an awesome time because we had Sister... Tahara. Tahara Daniels, yeah, is it? Daniel. Daniel, singular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she came out and she um and she shared the word this week, and I'm telling you, it was an awesome word. It was, amen. It was really amen. an awesome word. She did a great job, uh, and we had a really good time. She even was able to have some of her family come up from far away yeah. and join awesome. her. And if they're out there, we just want to say thank you for joining thank us this you. past Sunday. Yes, it was a... Uh, it's really a blessing to have you guys there. And I know she definitely enjoyed having you guys there to support her. Um, but again, we've been having a great time in the Lord and the services have been going great. Of course, we've been social distancing, but we're really getting close to that threshold. We had about, I think, 120 people at our last service. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm really mm -hmm. happy um, for everybody that's been coming out. We thank you for just being there with us. Mm -hmm. And I also want to um, just kind of give a shout out to all the people that have been coming out to our Bible studies. Bible. Yes. Uh, you know, since we had that sermon the other day um, about getting in the ark, mm -hmm. our Bible study turnouts have been very, very, very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been having like 30, I think last week we had like 30 people yeah. online for the, or yeah. to view that thing last last Tuesday. So Again, thank you so thank much for, you. for coming out and supporting. We we'll pray that you will continue to do so. You know, just come out and, and just enjoy our Christian family, our Christian community. Um, and feel free to add comments in the chats. Mm -hmm. We even have Pastor Ruth out there now joining in. <laughs> She's learning how to, uh, to comment during the messages as well. So come out and support. And it's really important, as we've been saying, about keeping yourselves in the Word of God yeah. and also to um, keep yourself in fellowship with men and women of God, people of the same mindset as yourself. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. Amen. So it's very important that we come together and we communicate, we talk about the things that we're going through, and we share our experiences one with another. Mm -hmm. And that's how we build our strength. Amen. And that's how we build our Christian family as well. You know, it's really nice to have everybody, you know, coming together in our Bible study times. And now we have our Sunday school that goes on on Friday nights. Friday nights. Um, they've been doing a good Zoom. job with that via Zoom. And they've been having a great time. So um, we're just glad that all you have continued to be, support us and be here with us. We thank you so much, Sister Melissa, Sister Fran and Talisha and um, Appalachia Kitchen and um, Javon. And Sister we have Sister Fran, of course, with her with her huge emojis. <laughs> we just thank everybody and Sister McClendon. Tiffany. We have a lot of people out there, and we're just so grateful for all you guys. Yeah. So just keep it up and continue to spread the word, yeah. word, you know, as we have our Bible study, share it with other people. And like I said, it makes um, it makes evangelizing a lot easier these days. You yeah. know, you just all you all it takes is a couple of clicks and you can send the link to somebody and tell them, hey, you might want to listen to this, yeah. might want to listen to this word of God It may encourage you. So, you know, just continue to 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 reach out to those in your communities, in your sphere of influences, mm -hmm. and let them know about the goodness of Amen. the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're just going to have a quick word of prayer before we get started. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you, Lord God, and talk about your goodness with your people, Lord. We pray that you will bless this word that is about to go forward, Lord, that it will bless somebody out there today, Amen. that somebody's life will be encouraged, strengthened, Lord God, or uplifted through the word, Lord Amen. God. And we pray that you will find good ground, Lord God, in, the, in your people. And we give you all the glory and the praise in your name we pray. Amen. 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 So as I was thinking about what God wanted to share with us today, I was given the title, The Broken and the Discarded. Mm. And the word today is about how some of us feel that because of the things that we've gone through or the circumstances that have happened to our, in our life, that we are no longer worthy of God's love or we're not worthy of anything because we, we judge ourselves harsher than yeah, probably harsh. anybody else yeah, judges us. And, and it's so funny how we as Christians tend to do that, you know, and and we think that we, we are no longer worthy of God's love or that we're not as good as X, Y, or Z as you look at other people. But God says, no, he's a God of restoration and he loves a good fixer-upper. Yes. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but I know my life needed a lot of fixing up in. <laughs> and um, as I started to think about this word, God was showing me an example. I don't know about you guys, but one thing my wife loves is she watches this couple, Chip and Joanna yes. Gaines, all the time. Fixer Upper. I, like I don't know if you guys <laughs> watch that, but it's it's on the Do It Yourself channel and they love to go and they like to restore old houses. Mm -hmm. They go into these houses and they look at them and they, they, they evaluate them. They look at them and they say, you know what? I think I, I, think I need to invest in this house. Amen. And mm -hmm. the thing that I love about the show is there are lots of other people that come by that same exact house, that same exact house, and they look at it and they say, you know what? That's not worth That's anything. Well. They look they at it from the outside, it. and sometimes yeah. they even go on the inside, and they look around, and they see the house, and it's like, this is disgusting. Yeah. They <laughs> they're, don't want it. <laughs> they're like, nobody could do anything Nothing with this house. Yeah. It's just, you look at it, there's trash all over the place. The walls have holes in them, you know, and, and people so look nice. at it, and they say, I can't do anything with, it, with yeah. that. And, but when they come in, and they look at that house. Yes. They, they see, see something the different. Yes. They see the bones. They see the, the potential of the house. Yes. Yeah. And I love that. They, they, they often talk about the bones of the house. Mm. And what they mean by the bones of it is that Foundation. even though you look past the surface and all the other stuff that you can see with the naked eye, mm. when you get all that stuff out of the way and you look at the structure mm -hmm. of that house, yeah. You can see that that house is built on something solid, something, something strong, something, something that is buildable. Yes. Something that is buildable. And that is what God is saying to us. You know, a lot of times we look at ourselves and we judge ourselves so harshly, or even sometimes other people look at you and they say that, you know, they look at you at first glance and they say, oh my gosh, that person is horrible or well, God can't do anything with them or we past. do it to ourselves. Yes. <laughs> Especially when we look into our past, mm, especially yeah. when we look into our past. But I thank God that he doesn't hold us to thank our past Jesus. and he's more concerned about our future. Amen. And that's what he worries about. And when he looks at us and he's looking at our life and he's trying to gauge us and he's seeing whether we have good bones, what he looks at is he looks at our heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what he looks at to determine if we have good bones or yeah. not. And the thing about the, the gains, when they go into these houses and they start to look at it and they start to evaluate it, they always have to come to this point where they say, okay, is this house worth investing X amount of dollars in it? Because they got to make sure that if they put their money in, that they can get the value back out yeah. on the other side. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about how God invests in us. And how when he gets to the other side, he knows that he's going to get a good return on his yeah, investment. Amen, amen. 
He yeah. never, never, never fails on his investment. No. <laughs> he knows he he is a better gauge of talent and about uh, and a, and a value than anybody else. Amen. And when he looks at you and when he looks at me, he sees somebody who he can work with, mm-hmm. who he looks at and he says, "Yep, I can do. They this. got good bones. <laughs> yes. I can work with this. Yes. I can work with this." So we have. So Chip and Joanna, when they see the house, they go in and they 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 look at it and find find the, the potential in it. And the next thing, when when the buyer goes in and the buyer says, "Yes, I'm going to get it," Chip and Joanna Joanna go in for demolition day, mm. <laughs> and that's when they tear down and break down all of those things that are harmful to the house, like the rotting electrical wire, the wood, all of that stuff that that the house has been keeping and harboring, those strongholds, that 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 thing that can damage the house, they go Amen. in and demo the demo it all out. They tear it all out. And that's what happens when when we are broken and when we are hurting and we feel discarded and 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 just broken god the spirit of the lord comes in and say okay my turn demo day <laughs> amen i'm going to tear down those strongholds that the enemy has put up in our lives those brokenness the broken hearted the 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 low self esteem all those things that the enemy has put up it's my turn to demo, to dem, I'm gonna tear down all of that, and that's what happens when the and when the spirit of the Lord steps in. Yes, but you know what though? When you watch them do the demolition, <laughs> it requires a lot yes. of work and a lot of effort to tear down all that old stuff. Mm-hmm. It really does. It takes a lot of effort. And just like in our natural life, when God goes in and he starts the demo thing and he starts taking things apart, for one, when he starts doing it, it looks like a mess. It does. It always looks like a mess and right. complete chaos yeah. when God starts to do the work. <laughs> It never looked beautiful when he starts doing his demolition no, day. Demolition is Everything is all over the place. <laughs> Dirt is everywhere. Everything is exposed. Everything that was covered up is opened up. Amen. And you can see every single thing that Everything. was wrong with that house. Amen. The crying nights, those <laughs> things that come up and, and the people that harm and hurt your heart. All of that ex- is exposed. And the good thing about it is what I like about um, Joanna and, and Chip, they go in and they try to find something like a diamond in the rough. Yes. And that's what God does. When he comes in, he's like, "Ooh, I got a diamond in the rough here. I can just breathe life into that diamond. I can breathe life into it. And, and he gets excited. He's like, I'm going to get you know, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get this person from feeling discarded, from feeling broken. I'm Amen. going to restore this person. And and that's what I love about the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. And like I said, there's a he puts a lot of work and a lot of effort into us. Mm-hmm. And as you could see when in the in in the renovation of those homes that they have to really go to town. They yeah. have it's not easy to break mm-hmm. those things down. Why? Because they were there almost since the foundation Mm. of the house. Sometimes those things are so hard, so hard and stubborn to tear down. And they have to bring in, you know, these sledgehammers and break the walls down. And they have to bring crowbars and they have to tear them up. And sometimes those things in our life that have been there since the beginning, those hurts, those, those, those things that are just holding on. God has to go to town on those. He has to break those up in our lives, <laughs> yeah. and it takes some time. And it's not it's not instantaneous. It takes work. Yes, it, it takes work. It and takes work. and that's one thing that we have to understand as well. That when God comes in to start trying to renovate us, and He starts trying to restore us to where He wants us to be, it's going to take some time. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. I think a lot of times. We kind of take the mindset that once we say amen, it's all right. 
But no, there's this there's a there's a process. Process. There's a there process that we have to go through. No one wants to go through the process. <laughs> yeah. No one likes the process. Yes, as Christians, we <laughs> shun that word process a lot. And not just as Christians, but people in general. Yes. Because process implies two things. It implies a period of time. So we have to be patient and we don't mm. want to be patient. Oh. And process typically usually means it's not going to be comfortable or it's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go and do something for the government and they say, we have a process. That usually means you're going to be filling out a lot of paperwork. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but process is usually difficult, so we don't like it. But there is a process that God is trying to bring us through. Each and every one of us Amen. is going to have to go through the process. Amen. And God is going to break us down and he's going to take all those things out of our life that have been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. But as Pastor Ruth, I mean, Pastor Marsha said, uh, <laughs> um, when Chip and Joanna are looking at these houses and they see something in that house that catches their eye, mm -hmm. that what she said, the diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. I've seen an episode where they saw this beam that this house had um, within the house and it ran across it. But it was it was really kind of beat up and it was discarded and it was really ugly and it was just rough. But when the wife saw that, she said, we have to take that. She said, we can use yeah. that. We can reuse that. And she said, you know what? I want to build the room around, around the beam. Right. I want to build a room around that one good thing that they found. Mm -hmm. They said, that's the thing that we're going to, that's going to be the theme of our renovation. Mm -hmm. And don't you know, that's how God treats that's us exactly too. Exactly how it treats The us. same thing in your life that you think is the worst possible thing about you. Mm -hmm. That thing that has been struggling, you've been struggling with and that plagues you. Maybe it's that attitude. Maybe it's that, that mentality. I don't know what it is. But that one thing that seems to be the worst thing for you, mm -hmm. God's looking at you and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I can use that. I can use, it. I can use that. Yeah. I can turn that around and I can make this the thing that I can build on mm -hmm. in their life. And God just wants you to know that he can do that for you. Yeah. He will do that in your life. And don't ever think that you are too far gone oh, no. that God cannot yeah. restore you. Yeah. Do not think that you are too far gone that he can't still use you. Amen. Because it doesn't matter where you are or what you're coming from. God can always get the glory from right. you. Amen. And that's true because I know when I was younger, I fought a lot. I was fighting in the physical. I was fighting every Not the spiritual. <laughs> We're talking about the physical. I was fighting and every <laughs> single Sunday I was up in the prayer mm -hmm. line. <laughs> and Pastor was praying for me, Lord, let Marcia stop fighting in school. But guess where? God took that fighting spirit and brought it into the spiritual realm. Amen. And now I'm fighting still, but I'm fighting with the enemy, the real one, the one that comes up against my spirit that tries to take take me out. He's the one that I fight. I fight my, my own self who, that desires to do bad stuff. I fight against, okay, I'm not going to go against what the Spirit of the Lord said, even though I myself want to do it. I take that fighting spirit and now I use it in the kingdom instead of outside of the kingdom. So whatever it is that you have, you can take that and use it for the glory Amen. of God. Instead of using it outside of, <laughs> which is what I was doing. <laughs> so so I, I, I turned it around and now I fight on the Lord's side instead of against him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but it's true. It's so true that God just uses those things that we thought were curses in our life. Yeah to be the blessings. Man. And like I said, it doesn't matter where you are or what you've done. It's it's so true that when he when he looks at a project and he sees that it needs that much more renovation, even like in the case with Chip and Joanna, when they look at that house and they see how how destitute it is and how broken it mm -hmm. is, they think one thing. They think that if they can go in and they can restore that, restore, they could get the rebuild. biggest return right. on their investment Amen. from that project Amen. because there is more that they can show. There is more that they can do with mm -hmm. that thing. Mm 
And don't you know, God is the same way. He gets the most glory from those people that everybody else thought were useless. He, when it it reminds me of, of the case of the, of the, of the lame man that sat at the gates and when he got restored and when he got rejuvenated and when he Walking got his strength back, he ran crazy. back into the church and he yes. started telling everybody about what God had done with him. But don't you know that man had been sitting there for years and everybody just walked by him. And I'm sure people talked about him and said, oh, here he goes begging mm-hmm. again. Amen. You know, kind of like we do when we pull up to a stop sign and we see somebody beside us with the sign saying, yeah. well, need money. That's kind of the same way that people looked at him. But then when God blessed him, but then when God restored him, him. then all of a sudden people were able to see him in a new light and see what God had done in his life and how God had restored him. And that is the type of God we serve. He is a miraculous God. And, And like I said, he knows how to take all those things that were once bad and use them to get his glory. And and remember, you know, don't don't God doesn't look at us now. He looks at the finished product. Uh, yes. He doesn't look at 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 what at at uh, who we are now. He looks, okay, I see like just as he said Gideon. Gideon was hiding. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and he called him a mighty man because mm-hmm. he saw him in the future. He saw what he was going to to mm-hmm. be doing and 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 what what he was going to conquer. And so that's what God sees in us. So that's where we have we have to get there. We have to get to okay God, I can't look at myself now. I have to, 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 to know that I am changing. It's baby steps. It's a process. I know I'm changing. I'm not where I was. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I know that I have grown. And that's where we have to get to. We have to get to that point where we see ourselves grown up. Yes. The- yes. And, 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 and like, um, the process with rebuilding and refurbishing things. Once everything starts, once they start working on that project, mm-hmm. the the very first day you can't even after they've torn all the bad things out and got it out of the way, you still can't see no. what the finished product is going to be like. No. It's going to take some time to get there to where that finished project yeah. is. But you know what? Not everybody can see that. No. Just like I said in the beginning, a lot of people might go by that same house, but they don't have that, that eye, Mm -hmm. that eye that has the ability to look at something and see its potential to look at, uh, 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 to look at a house and see it if just from a first glance and say, yep, I can do something with that, but I'm grateful. I am so, so, so very, (laughs) very grateful (laughs) that our Lord, our God, our savior has a phenomenal eye when it comes to (laughs) to gauging talent. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Because if not, we probably all would be thrown aside (laughs) (laughs) because all of us at some point in our life, we look rough. I'm not going to lie. We look rough. I still do. (laughs) (laughs) Working on it. It's a process, right? Process. (laughs) Amen. Amen. But, you know, but God has that impeccable eye where he can look at it and he can say, yep, I can see that that growth. I could see that potential in that child of mine. All I have to do is, is, is move some things around, shuffle some things around in their life. And I have to, to just reinforce that and maybe throw a couple coats of paint on some stuff mm. and maybe, you know, get a better light so it can shine a little brighter. Mm. And, 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 you know, he just starts to work on us and work on us and work yeah. on us. And after some time, we start to see that as the Bible says, that stone that was rejected then becomes that then chief the corner cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And that's how God is. Amen. Everybody else may have passed on you. Mm-hmm. Everybody else may have overlooked you. Everybody else may have saw you and thought you were not worthy for, of even a second effort. But God. But God. Thank you, Jesus. But God. But God Amen. still saw. <laughs> God still saw the value in Amen. you. As that song used to say, um, he saw the best in me. When He's, everyone else around me could only see the worst, yeah. he saw the best. He Marvin saw the, Sapp. Yes. Pastor Marvin Sapp. Pastor, Sapp. Yep. And, and it is so true. He sees the best in me. 
He sees the best in you. He does. And and I just love, like I said, that he doesn't hold me accountable for the past. And the same thing, like when you're building a house, once it gets restored and the person comes out, when it's all said and done and you get the house done, there's one more step that has to happen when it's all done. The appraiser comes back out to that house. And before it starts, they say the house was worth this amount. And it's usually not very much. Mm -mm. But in the end, when the appraiser comes out, who is a perfect person who has an expertise Mm -hmm. in looking at properties and seeing the value, then they look at that. Then they look at that and they say, yes, that thing is now worth this value. And they place a value on it. And it is always far greater greater. than it was in the beginning. And God is looking at us and he's saying, you are worth more now than you were before. Because I have restored you. I have renovated you. And I have brought you to a new place. Or I am renovating you. Yes. Or I am restoring you. I am rebuilding you. And that's the thing that we, we, we don't, we get lost in not seeing that he is doing the work. We, we get so caught up in, in life and circumstance and, and our failures and our, our situations that we don't see God working. It, it may be small, it may be, it may be minuscule, but he is working. So don't allow your situation to overwhelm you so much that you don't see the growth in yourself. That you don't see the rebuilding and the restoring of your own heart, of your own self. Don't lose that, that, that small growth that he put in you. Because that's what the enemy does. He comes and he robs us of these small victories that we yes, got in our in, yes. that we got in our lives. And then we forget. And so we don't think about it. And then the situation that we experience becomes bigger. And then we don't realize, wait, two years ago, I wasn't here. Amen. I wasn't here two years ago. Two years ago, I was like, I want nothing to do with God. But today I'm like, I can't give up on God. (laughs) I I can't see my life without God. I can't, I can't experience life without him. And that's where we have to grab onto the light the light is those small things that he, those small goals that he accomplishes in our lives. We have to see them because if we don't, we won't see the beauty. We won't see the potential and we'll want to give up. Yes. And, and, and we can't do that. We have to press our way, grab on to those memorials that matters. Grab on to those memorials because you're going to need to hold on to them tight because the enemy is going to try to pry them out of your hands. You can't let him do that. Yes, yes. That is so true. That is so true. So as God starts to work on us, as God starts to renovate us and and starts to change who we Mm -hmm. are, I mean, who we were into who we are, we have to be mindful of that. Amen. And because we need to thank him for it. Not only do we have to just just remember them so that we can have the, 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 the courage and the strength to move forward. But we want to thank God for Amen. what he did. Thank him for the thank little you. things Amen. in our lives. Thank him for the for the small things in our Amen. life. Yes. Because we, they may be small, but when you add them all up, become it becomes very something big. very, yes. very, very big. Yes. It becomes something, something very, very big. Right. So we have to remember to, to be grateful for it. Yeah. And remember, when the appraiser comes... <laughs> When the appraiser comes, he's coming for those small goals that you've accomplished. That's what he's coming to. We just realize that we're we're he's he's about to renovate. When he when when we, when he fixes the the foundation, the appraiser comes and looks to see if the, the the foundation is right. If the foundation is right, he says yes, go ahead. If the foundation is a little unsettling, he said no, go back and check it again. And that's what you have. The appraiser is coming to see each step, each step you take, each step you take. He's coming to check it out. So you make sure you hold on. Like I said, hold on to those goals. Amen. Amen. And the thing that happens in the end of one of these Chip and Joanna Gaines episodes is 
in the end, when everything is all done and they finally have gone through all the details and they have renovated the house to the to what they're going to do, mm -hmm. in the end, they always take a big giant picture of the old house mm -hmm. and they put it in front of the old house so that all you can see is the, what it looked like before. And then they bring the family back and they show them, they stand them in front of that big giant picture and they see the old, the same old thing. But then they say, now it's time for the big reveal. Mm -hmm. And the big reveal, they come and they take that big giant picture and they roll it out of the way. And then everybody gets a chance to see everybody. what yeah. has been done to the house and how it has been restored. Amen. And then when they see how drastic of a change it is, then people get to see the value of the new house. Mm -hmm. And usually they all start clapping and they start crying and they yeah. start being so grateful for the, yeah. for, for the change that Amen. has happened to the house. And they're excited to live in that in house. house. Yeah. And God is saying, I am about to reveal Big us reveal. to the world Amen. The and show reveal. the world my new my church, my church, body, my yes. new body of people. <laughs> and, to, and everybody is going to get to see who we are and what we are. Amen. But it's also just important that we don't hide who we were. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because who we were speaks volumes as to who we are. Amen. Because that's what shows the progress that we made. If we never reveal to people who we were and we always keep that secret, secret yeah. then people, God can't get the true glory mm -hmm. because nobody ever knew you went through those things. Nobody ever knew you struggled with those yeah. things. Nobody ever thought that you would be, have done those things. But if we hide them, then God can't get the glory. Amen. We need Amen. to let people in and let yes. people know what we're Take fighting for, covers. what we're fighting Be through. Transparent. Like we said, when they go through, they have to rip down every single thing and everybody can see and, and, and they take down those things that are, are keeping those things hidden behind the walls. Amen. Behind and when he tears down all those things, you can see the true behind surface the behind the walls. The walls yes. And there you see the bones. Yeah. But you have to take the walls down so we can see all the perfections, imperfections. Yep. You got to let, you got to expose that stuff so that yeah, we could see, so everybody can see. Because like I said, in the end, God will get the most glory when he has to do the most restoration. Mm. That is where the true miracle lies. Mm. When somebody gets to see, wow. If God can do that for them, I see what they were. I saw it. They Amen. told me about it. Yes. I watched them live through it. Yes. I saw her beating up people. <laughs> you did. But now, <laughs> now she doesn't beat up I as many did. people. <laughs> I've been transformed. <laughs> No, but God gets his glory. In <laughs> yes, he does. He does get the glory. And that's what we have to remember. He gets the glory. If we take off the mask and, and, and uncover those things, people are going to see what we've gone through and how we went through. That's the other thing. How did I make it through? Did I make it through kicking and screaming? Sometimes I do. <laughs> do I make it through praising and ex exalting the Lord? I try to do that as much as I can. Do I praise him in advance? I try to do that every chance I get. And that's the thing they need to see so our lives can be living testimonies. Yes. How do you go through life when, when it's, you're being knocked around every side, but yet you're still giving God the glory because he deserves it. And, yes. and, and, and my life, I want to be a living testimony for him. Sometimes you don't even have to open your mouth. You could just be the way you interact with people, the way you talk to people, the way you communicate. That alone, if you can do that, a living testimony for Christ. Amen. Amen. So again, remember, you are never too far gone that God can't still find a way to Amen. restore and to rejuvenate you.
and bring you back to value. Amen. Amen. So don't ever give up on yourself because God won't give up on you. No. He won't. He will keep trying. He will he keep will working keep with working. you. He can, He will keep working on you no matter what it takes. Amen. Amen. That is true. Amen. That so is true. just remember that God loves you and he's excited about what he can do with you. He's looking at you. He's looking at your life and he's saying, I see there's, there's some good bones there. Yes. I can do something with that. Amen. I could do something with him. I could do something with her and I can get my value. I can get my return on my investment Amen. in them. Amen. So let God be glorified through your life. Not, so, not just in the good times, but also through the bad Amen. times. Amen. But God, because God, yes, because God can get his glory yeah. and he will be revealed through the progress and the process that we all go through. Amen. 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 And we just wanted to share that with you. And I also want to make sure that um, we give a shout out. Also, for those of you who don't know, you can the young people's podcast went out the other day. Yay. We had some technical difficulties, so it went out a little later than we <laughs> wanted. But it eventually got out there. So it's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. I think Spotify, it's on Spotify and it's going to be on, podcasts. it's going to be on a lot of different platforms, yes. Apple, Apple, iPod cast, whatever they got it. I don't know, <laughs> but it's on almost all the media it's podcast media. media. So yes. look them up. It's called NEP, NEPM space, the number seven E V E N. So um, just look it up. It's, it's exciting. God is doing great things. And I'm hoping that there will be more ventures that come out of NEP Ministries. And who knows, maybe one of you guys will be the one next to spawn the next thing that we're going to do. I'm praying that's the case. Yeah. Um, so may God be with you. And may God keep you. And we're so glad to see all of you guys out there. And may God bless your families. Stay safe. Thanks. Stay safe, people. Please be very safe. And take care of yourselves. Pastor Phil Parker, it was good to see you on the line. I miss you so much. I'm glad you're back. Hope to get the chance to see you soon. Um, but at this time, we're just going to say a quick prayer. Um, let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that has went forth, Lord. We pray that again that it has found good ground, Lord. Yes. And that has blessed somebody's life, Lord, or encouraged somebody to not give up today. Amen. But to hold on and know yes. that God is not through with them yet. Yes. To be, and, and as the song has said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yes. yet. God is going to restore us and get his glory from our lives. So don't give up. Yes. Let us not give hold us, on. but let us hold strong Jesus. to God's unchanging hand. Yes. And allow him to do in us what he will. Amen. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Thank church you. family. We miss you. We love you. We're glad yes. to see you guys out there. Keep up the good good fight, and we will see you next time on the NEP podcast. All right. Bye. No, bye. bye. <laughs> it's not really a podcast. It's more like a Bible study. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. God bless.